Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey, it's your boy Max, I'm the host of this channel, here we are, brand new year 2023, and I'm going to christen the new year by naming you the top 100 players in the world. I'm going to be starting from 100, and in today's video we're going to get up to 51, as I am going to do the top 50 in a separate video, because I know I talk a lot, I go on tangents and things like that. So I'll describe the players a fair bit as I do want to um, give everyone a good fair mention. Thank you very much to my patrons. To my patrons, just be aware I am going to be changing my Patreon tiers in a wee while, so just keep your eyes on that. Righto guys, the criteria is pretty simple. Every player on this list needed to feature at test level in 2022 as I think it's pretty unfair to compare one club scene to the other. Super Rugby, for example, is a far faster game than the English Premiership, whereas over in Japan they don't play a lot, but they do play very fast-paced rugby. So I think this is probably the only fair, clean way to do this. Um, I do have 13 women and 87 men in my top 100, so without getting too into things, I'm going to crack right into it. At number 100 is J. Jamie Ritchie, the Scotland captain. He is indeed the right man to lead the Scots. He's got a good ability to jackal the ball, a very useful guy on the turnover, and he carries pretty hard as well. Pretty experienced for a young bloke, so I think he's definitely deserving as the first player on this list. The next player, I'm going to go to Julian Montoya, the Argentinian captain at number 99, a very technically good hooker who throws the line at accurately, some massive tackles, a lot of caps to his name. He's very very, very reliable in crucial moments, the right man to lead his country as well. For number 98 of the first woman, Luca Connor, she's a very good impact player for the Black Ferns, makes plenty of jackals, real feisty in the breakdown, quick ruck speed, accurate line out throwing, and boy can she carry hard. Number 97 is Henry Slade of England, what can't the guy do? He's got a pretty good all round game, decent size to him at 6'3", very strong kicking, a fair bit of pace as well, excellent enabling of those outside him with his passing game, and he's very experienced as well. Number 96 is Solomoni Funaki from Tonga, a real legend over here in Hawke's Bay. He became the Tongan vice-captain in just his second test. He's a weapon when it comes to winning turnovers. His tackles are bone-crunching, and just like any decent Pacific Island player, he's worked very hard on his carrying game and is a real humble man with excellent leadership skills. Number 95 is K. Kaylin Doris of Ireland, an excellent, excellent guy if you want to use him as a one-man pod, carries very hard like a lot of the other forwards I've mentioned, wins a lot of turnovers, and at 6'4", he's not a bad line-out option either. I can see him being a bit of a leader for the Irish in the future years of his career, and he's indeed going to get even better, I believe. Aaron Smith over at number 94 had a bit of a subpar year by his means, but I, st I still think rather he offers the All Blacks a lot when it comes to enabling the tactics decisions that coaches draft down. Um, obviously his kicking game still pretty sharp and we do still get glimpses of his running game from when he was younger. Number 93 is Andrew Callaway of Australia. I don't have too many Aussies on my list but you can't ignore Andrew Callaway because he's very very naturally talented plus he can cover both wing and fullback. Um, goes missing sometimes on defence but reads the game very well and scores a Lots of tries. Number 92, Dylan Riley of Japan, who I've been very impressed by as of late. A great blend between a, a crash ball um, runner, a great blend with um, the passing game, and a great blend with the kicking game. Just the ideal center who's rock solid that you need to make a lot of good decisions. Number 91, Franz Mulherber. South Africa's game plan doesn't really allow him to do a lot around the field but he does a lot of organisation when it comes to the shape of the team's defensive pods. He's often over the breakdown to manage what shape the team's going to take, and I think he's going to be an even better coach than he is as a player. Um, I've been saying that for a few years now, and his scrummaging is still very much up to test standard. Number 90, Vinaya Habosi from Fiji. He was a star for the Drua, and he took that form to test level. Um, amazing, amazing 
amazing talent, this guy over here. Hey everyone, I'm just editing the video right now and I've changed number 89 to Hugo Keenan of Ireland. The dude is a supremely talented player. He's a pretty good defender, great under the high ball. Not the world's best fullback, but he is indeed quite far up there when it comes to picking the best. Sorry about this wee change of the pacing over here. I ended up changing my mind as I was um, making the video, and I've chosen to shift Hugo Keenan into the team. A very, very good player, and I think it was a bit of a travesty I didn't originally have him in there. So here he is, he's on the list at number 89. Number 88, Danny Tawala from Samoa, who can cover both centre and fullback. A very fast guy, a great kicking game, and very, very strong. He does never look out of place in that defensive line, eh? Number 87, James Slipper. Pretty much copy and paste my compliments for Mulherba over onto James Slipper, who is the captain of Australia. A fine scrummager indeed. Number 86 is Joanna Nganwu, otherwise known as the hand over here in New Zealand. She pretty Pretty much embodies what's needed of an impact player in the modern game and boy she does it well one of the fastest players in the black ferns but remains awesome in the set piece 85 sebastian negri a powerhouse for the Italians who are really on the rise as of late. He's had a very storied career and was even overshadowing Sergio Parise in his last years of Italy. He's done some fine work for the Italians and deserves to be on this list. Number 84, I've got Hairi Tehetet, a former Māori All Black who was um, now eligible for Fiji and has been playing for them for a bit. A very fine scrummager who carries hard. Fiji need that muscle up front and he's answered the Call. Number 83 is Damien Willemser of South Africa, who's done a fine job covering both 10 and 15 for them lately. Um, this is his first um, entry onto my list, I believe, and I think he's going to get even better as he is still a very young man. His goal kicking could probably improve a fair bit. That's why he's not as far up on the list as I think he could be. Number 82, Bundy Aki. Didn't quite have the best year discipline wise, I'm going to admit that now, but Aki remains a rock solid midfielder in a back line full of kicking options he is the one guy to get them to go forward as you gotta balance your back line a wee little bit number 81 is Jonathan Tomatieni from Samoa man he has really come of age as of late he's getting just a little bit more game time than Arianari who he forms a one two punch with for both Moana Pacifica and for Samoa he's got such a good game management tempo and an excellent passing game his Box kicking, Whew, perfect my man. Number 80, Jaden Hendrickser, fills a very similar role to South Africa's pack. He bosses them around so, so well from number 9. He's just the perfect young halfback. Over at number um, 79, I've got Taniela Tupo. Needs to improve a bit around his um, defensive efforts, but his carrying's perfect, his scrummaging's perfect, his ruck speed's perfect. A very, very good player indeed, Tani Alatupo. I just wish he chose to play for Tonga. Zoe Harrison's in at number 78. She's a real standout in the English back line, very good at making the decisions. She was a star at the Rugby World Cup, and I think a lot of the audience members were cheering for her during that week final. Number 77, I have Ali Price of Scotland. Born in England but chose to represent Scotland. He was massive for the British and Irish Lions in 2021 and he's continued that form into Scotland's camp. He's been a very good leader for them and amazing when it comes to defending from a very awkward position as well. Number 76, Chelsea Bremner, one of the best players I've ever had as a guest on this channel. I even like her a bit more now she's joined the Chiefs. Just very, very good at what she does she's aggressive as on defense which I love to see a hard worker in the liner and when it comes to ruck speed and not a bad carrier either she's so so strong number 75 Becca Gorgadza from Georgia he's phenomenal he could probably end up becoming their greatest of all time I'd actually say what a powerhouse of a loose forward he is number um, 74 is Nick White South Africa know him for being a bad actor but I know him is a very annoying halfback chances are if you're annoyed by an opposition halfback they're very very good number 73 tom curry 
a very good all-round loose forward. He can cover six, seven, and eight, and he's just a jackal machine. I don't think I have to say much more about him. Number 72 is Merab Sharikadza, the Georgian captain, a solid center who reads the game excellently. He reminds me almost of a Georgian Conrad Smith with how slippery he is and how he reads the game rather. Doesn't score a crazy amount of tries, but he's a fine attacking option nonetheless. Number 71, I know the graphic says Makazoli Mapimpi, I made a mistake. This is supposed to be Kurt Lee Aronza, who got a lot of tries for South Africa in his first season of Test Rugby. He is a joy to watch, he lights the game up, and he's a perfect winger for the marketing. Number 70, I have David Havili. He's put on a lot of weight since his recall to the All Blacks in terms of muscle. He was 88 after having bowel surgery in 2020. He's now a solid 96 kgs. A muscular defender with a long range kicking game is just absolutely perfect as is his teamwork with Richie Mawonga. The dude still has a fair bit of pace as well as he used to play as a fullback. Number se- um, sorry, 69 is Geronimo de la Fuente from Argentina. Almost a carbon copy of Havili, except he's a bit of a better defender and he's far more experienced with 70 test caps. The guy's been one of their best for a very long time and is still playing darn well for a guy who's getting to the end of his career. Number um, 68 is Marley Packer, a turnover machine for England. She runs very, very hard with ball in hand as well. You don't want to mess with her when you're playing against her, that's for sure. 67. Will Jordan, a bit further down my list compared to last time as he didn't quite get as many opportunities, but when he got them, he still shines nonetheless. He is very, very, very close to 30 tries for the All Blacks. He's got as many tries as he's played tests. The guy is just a workhorse when it comes to getting involved with the match. Number 66 is Sarah Hunter, reaching some of her best career form for the um, English team at the 2022 Rugby World up a very strong leader as well she does a great job at organizing that pack 65 is Paolo Garbisi he's an emerging talent from Italy who's got a very good kicking game and he does a great job at managing the team as well fair bit of flair to watch from him and his goal kicking ain't bad either number 64 is Alan Ala Alatoa from I was about to say Samoa, but that's his brother Michael. He's from the Wallabies, and he's a very crucial leader to their setup. I'd almost prefer him as the captain over James Slipper, but he's still very good indeed. Um, some quick ruck speed for a big guy as well, ala ala tour. Josh Adams of Wales is 63. Um, I don't have too many Welsh players after the... PVAC year, but Josh Adams remains a bright shining light in the world of Test Rugby nonetheless. I just love watching him play. There's no other way to say it. Number 62, Pablo Matera. Now, a household name in New Zealand after a great stint with the Crusaders. He was in World Rugby's dream team, but I think it's a bit hard to put him further up the list because he did make a few tackle mistakes in the Rugby Championship. Um, Number 61, Peter Samu of Australia. He's probably my highest placed Aussie. I know everyone's going to have a cry about Australia, but we hate hate them. They hate us. It's kind of just a thing we have. Samu's evolved into pretty much the ideal impact player who can cover six, seven, and Eight. And for Dave Rennie's side, they kind of need a dude, a dude that's experienced that can do that. Uh, 60 is Kazuki Himeno of Japan. Just a player who's unplayable every now and again. I just want Japan to play more tests during the year so I can rank this dude higher. Number 59, Robbie Henshaw. One of the greats of Irish rugby. Their best ever centre that isn't Brian O'Driscoll. The dude is one of the kings of the game. I don't have to say much more, do I? Number 58. Ruby Tui, a charismatic winger for the Black Ferns, who has plenty of pace, strong defense, and a very, very charming offload game indeed. Number 57, Ox and Cheer. What an amazing loose head prop the dude is. Um, he's just perfect at the core roles of, of his position, rather. Defends strongly, scrums strongly, and a very good, technically good line-out lifter. Um, number 56, Tyrell Lomax. What a year he had of improving for the All Blacks. I've got to have him on the list. Similarly to Ethan DeGroote, who I've got at number 55. Both of them are just beasts who are so, so mobile and amazing in the scrum. 54, 
Israel Falau of Tonga, who's a former Wallaby, has recently regained his Tongan um, eligibility, rather, after he was a Wallaby for six seasons, played 70 tests for them, now he's gone back to Tonga to show his aerial versatility under the high ball and his lethal try-scoring ability. The dude is absolutely amazing, and I'm so glad to see him back in the test scene. Number 53... Cyril Bailly, one of the rocks of the French resurgence, a powerful, powerful scrummager who played as a back when he was younger, so it was a very mint offload game indeed. Number 52, I have Ange Copawozo of Italy. He um, plays in Toulouse and he's setting the world on absolute fire, one World Rugby Breakthrough Player of the Year, and I'm very excited to see how this dude improves, and to round out 100 through to 51, I have a South African prop called Stephen Kitsoff, who I'm sure you all know. Kitsoff is essentially the ideal loose head prop. He works hard whether he's coming off the bench or he's starting, scrummaging, perfect. Line-up lifting, perfect. Quick ruck speed, amazing carries, turnover machine, and of course, he tackles you big time. I'm going to start a part two for the top 50 players, so make sure to tune in for that one, guys. This video has probably got quite long already, so I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for watching. Head over to the next one. Cheers, guys.